Welcome to 201 Today. In our first segment, we're going to take a look at an interview with our new superintendent. Congratulations on being appointed superintendent of District 201. Would you please explain to our viewers the job of a high school superintendent? Certainly. The job of the superintendent is like a CEO of a company. Uh, many students don't understand this, but we are a $100 million business. So our budget is over $100 million. So I'm the CEO of a company. Our product are students. But we do have businesses. We have um, the responsibility of food service. We have the responsibility of custodial, cleaning the building. We have the responsibility of making sure that we're fully staffed with highly qualified teachers. And then that's the role of the superintendents to oversee the whole operation. What would you say are some of the greatest strengths of this school district and community? I think there's many strengths in the community itself. Um, there's a strong tradition, a rich tradition. We have strong churches. We have uh, strong civic organizations. We have uh, very good leadership in all of our towns. I think that's probably one of our greatest strengths. Um, in the school community, I think that you have a long tradition of teachers. If you look at how many teachers have been um, students here and then have come back as teachers and have spent their entire careers here, we have a long, rich tradition of serving the, the community. What are some of your short-term and long-term goals for Morton High Schools? Well, first of all, short-term, many of you are quite cognizant of the fact that we are suffering from serious fiscal issues right now. We are spending more money than we're bringing in. No business can do that. Your parents can't do that. The community can't do that. You can't write more checks than you have money in your bank account for. We're currently spending about $7 million a year more than what we take in. That's why we've talked about all the cuts that we have to make and do the things that we have to do. Compounded uh, that problem's compounded by the fact that the economy's been so bad that the schools have been suffering because the state revenues haven't been coming in. So the revenue that we used to get is not even coming in anymore. So we're losing money that we used to count on, plus we're spending more than what we were making in the beginning. So it's very fiscally irresponsible of us to keep spending more and more and more than what we, br what we bring in. I think so the, the short-term goal is to stop the bleeding, if you will, to stop spending more than what we're bringing in and find ways to run a more efficient operation. My long-term goals and what I'm really uh, working for for our district is, number one, we're going to hold the adults accountable. You always hear them talking about, oh, you need to be accountable for your homework. You need to be, adults need to be accountable in this organization as well. That's my job. Their job is to hold students accountable. My job is to hold them accountable. Second thing is I want to enhance learning for students. Um, we're not one of the highest scoring districts in the state of Illinois if you pay attention to our school report cards. Our students can do much better than what they're showing on tests. We need to find ways to reach out and give them opportunities to show that, but also to help you learn. Another one is that I want to ensure that the community and the parents are involved in educational process. Many of our parents don't come to the schools. They don't know what's happening. I don't know why they don't want to come here. I have my own ideas, but we're going to try to fix that. We want parents to sign on to Skyward and check your attendance. We want them to sign on to Skyward, check your grades. But more importantly, we want them to come to PTO meetings. We want them to come to board meetings. We want them to be actively involved in committees, share their knowledge. And on top of that, as I said, we have a lot of problems in this district that can be solved by the brain power of our community. People aren't aren't asked to give in and talk about some of our problems. They, they are too busy with their own. But I think collectively they'd start looking at us and saying, wow, we can help. You know, We have people that know people who know how to get things done. Those are the people that we're going to need to touch. So um, we'll be reaching out to the community, uh, to the parents for that, but also for the community as well. I mean, being a good school district is good for the community. Everybody needs a good educational system. One of the things they always talk about, real estate prices are driven by three things, location, location, location. And the primary thing that makes a location desirable are good schools. So it's, it's incumbent upon me to push to engage the community in making our, our schools better. So we're going to be working with the local government. We're going to be working with the Cicero and Berwyn business districts, along with Stickney, Lyons, McCook, and Forest View, we're going to touch all of them because we need their input. Uh, the next thing is we need to have safe and well-maintained schools. That's another one of our goals. Um, one of the things that we're working on is how do we make it a safer place? We worked on getting more surveillance cameras to make sure that kids are safe, but also it means fixing the roofs where they're leaking. You know here at the East Campus we have leaky roofs. We're trying to fix those. There's a lot of ideas. Uh, 
opportunities for us to get better with our facilities. But we need to have clean and efficient operations, and they must be safe and orderly as well. And the most important thing, as we've already talked about, is to run an efficient business operation. It's important for me. This is a business, $100 million business. We need to run it efficiently because I want all of our efforts to be going through what our primary mission is, and that's increasing student achievement. So we need to focus in on what do we do to run efficiently so we can give you guys the best education possible. Recently, employees from our school district were required to complete National Incident Management System training. Would you please explain to our viewers why they were required to complete the training, what the training entailed, and how the training will have a positive impact on our school district? Certainly. The, the NIMS training, uh, the National Incident Management System training that um, our, all of our administrators and all of our security personnel participated in recently, is designed to talk about incident command structure. It talks about who's in charge when something happens. Now, every, every operation in the United States that falls under the uh, federal government has to use the same incident command structure that our staff was trained in. What you have is an inc incident commander. The first person on the scene is the incident commander until somebody with more knowledge and more expertise arrives. For example, um, in, when there's a fire at the school, the first person in charge is your teacher because the teacher is saying, okay, you need to evacuate the room. Okay, you need to do this. The next person who's in charge is your principal. When the principal comes and says, oh, we have to do this, the principal's in charge because they have the most knowledge and the most authority. But when the fire department gets on board, you know, your principal is no longer in charge. It's a fire, so the fire commander is in charge. Once, once the fire is put out, then the investigation begins of how did the fire start. That becomes a police and now the police are in charge. That's what we were training people on how to understand incident command structure. And also it goes a little bit further. National Incident Management System was designed by the federal government. So everyone speaks the same language. So when you have mutual, grade, uh, mutual aid agreements with different um, organizations like the fire department, police department, everybody's talking the same language. And we needed our people to be trained in that as well. It's also a federal mandate that everyone be NIMS compliant. So it's an obligation that we have to the federal government to do. So we were doing that. Is there anything else that you would like to say to our viewers and community about the direction of Morton High Schools? I think what, what we do want to say is that we're in this together as a community, as students, as faculty, as staff, as community members, taxpayers. This is not just a student school. This is a school for the entire community. We need the entire community to buy into what we need to do. We need their input. We need them their ideas. We need them to be there to take action when we need them to take action. We have many, many needs that we need to fix. We have a lot of issues that we need to resolve, and that can't be solved by just one or two people. We need a collaboration from all of the municipalities, the governments, the business community, the parents, the staff, and the students.